So I've taken a look at the crossover. And it has, well, here, let me show you. Let's see if we can get this down here without pulling those wires out. And it looks like I can. Although I think there's a little staple here I'm going to pull out to give myself a little more room. Yeah, that gives me a little more room. So what we have here <coughs> is a reasonably complex network, but I only see three capacitors on it, so it's not, uh, you know, it's not one of these networks with five, six, seven caps in it. I see a two microfarad. I see a three microfarad, and this looks like a fifteen. So I went to my inventory and I just happened to have a pair of 2.2s, a pair of 3.3s, and a pair of 15s. Now let me comment on these capacitors for a couple, couple reasons. Um, first of all is they don't exactly match. I mean I'm going to replace a 2 microfarad cap with a 2.2. I'm going to replace a 3 microfarad cap with a 3.3. Now those caps are um, in line for high frequency uh, filtering. And normally, uh, well if you want to if you want to make them stock, you, you make them identical. Um, if I go up a little bit in capacitance, what that does is it a little lets a little more of the high frequencies through. A little, it lowers the crossover point slightly. Now, you know you don't want to replace a two with a five because that'll probably blow a tweeter. But replacing a two with a two point two and a three with a three point three, all that's going to do is give us a little little more high uh, in the end result, and I'm okay with that because these speakers sound a little bottom heavy anyway. Um, the other comment is these are all um, electrolytic capacitors. Uh, I normally use film capacitors um, in, a, in any speaker that I'm going to keep, and, and these I don't intend to keep. Uh, I'm going to cut some corners because I had some inventory. The, the electrolytics don't sound quite as good as inline films, uh, but you know the reality is most people don't necessarily know the difference anyway. So the speakers will come out sounding like they sound, based upon the caps. I had these in inventory. If I didn't have these in inventory, I might have bought film caps off of Parts Express. But I just happen to have these, so I'm just going to get going and get started on the replacement. So first thing I like to do is like to like to break loose the capacitors with the glue. There's usually some glue on them. Normally what I'll do is I'll just take a flat screwdriver and kind of pry on it just a little bit. And that usually, if you just twist it a little bit, the glue, the old glue will pop up, typically. There we go. Here's a little pop. So that one I believe is broken loose. Yeah, that one's loose. Let's check these over here. Another case. Just pop them up if I can, or if it's already loose already. That one might be loose already. Let's see on this one. There we go. Just pop the glue loose. The glue is going to be brittle. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. There's the right way, and there's the easy way. The right way would be for to remove these capacitors at the existing solder joints and then replace them exactly like that. Um, sometimes these solder joints are pretty complex though and I, that's not my my forte is not excellent soldering so what I like to do is I like to use the leads that are already there and what I'll do is I'll take, let's take the two already and before I clip the old capacitors out I'll put the new ones in and I'll wrap them around I'll wrap them around the existing leads so that I can get a solder bead on them. Here we 
get this. Kind of like so. And then the same thing over here. So we can get that in there. trouble with this one I'm not sure why but I am and then I can do the same thing with this layer wrap it around tight and then what I'll do is I'll put a solder bead here and I'll put a solder bead there and then I'll just clip the old cap out now like I said, it's, it's not necessarily the right way to do it, but it's certainly an effective way and it's a lot easier than messing with some of these complex solder joints like this one here. Because once you loosen these things up, then, you know, they sometimes can be a little more complicated to get these solder joints back in place. So I'm just going to do like so. And I'm going to do the same with the other one, with the three. that wrapped around there so like so and the same thing over here spin that up like that Now if you see what I got is I got the ability to just put a solder joint right there, another solder joint right there with these two and another solder joint right there. And then I can just clip the old caps out and I'll be done. So let's see how good my soldering skills are today. First thing I gotta do is get my soldering iron out. I got it tucked away here in my new setup. Isn't the best. Maybe I don't even have enough enough cord here. Let me get an extension cord. I have one. Here we go. It'll give me a little extra cord to play with. This is a new bench for me. I just set this up. This is the first time I'm soldering on this new bench. And we'll see how it goes. <sighs> Okay. I have to wait for that to warm up a little bit. Got some decent solder right here. Use good solder, folks. Don't don't go on to Amazon and buy the cheapest solder. Spend a little more money and get some good solder. It makes a big difference. It's especially true with solder braid. Like here I've got two examples of soldered braid which is used to soak up the excess solder when you remove a joint. You got to get the rosin coated solder braid. That's the only stuff that works. This stuff just doesn't work. It's cheap, but it just doesn't work. Let's just get this back on here. While we're waiting for the solder iron to heat up, let's put the, the 15 cap in place too.
that wrapped right around there if I can. It's actually probably sufficient just like that. If I can get in there. Another thing about soldering. Soldering is something that takes a lot of practice. And after you do a lot of practice, one thing you learn that having a clean solder tip is really important. So they have things here called solder tip cleaner, tip tinner and tip cleaner, which I like to use before I start. There. Let's get us a more cord here. Let's see if we're hot yet. Yep, we're hot. So this cleans the tip, it gets it nice and shiny, makes for good heat transfer. Now let's see if I can get in and do one of these, it's going to be a little tricky. I like to tin the... I think that's gonna work. Yeah, that looks good. On the other side here. That looks good too. Keep your tip clean. Soldering is not my forte. Get some more of this cord out of the way here. That one yeah, got it. Put this one here. I get older, my hands shake a little more. Makes it hard. I guess I got that one. Not the best, but I got it. The last one here. Okay. Our tip nice and clean. Always clean it when you put it away. It's really important for good soldering to have a clean tip. You see how nice and shiny that is? That's where you get good heat transfer. Now we 
to find my special tool. Where is my special tool? Right here are my nippers. These are very useful. You can pick them up at Northern Tool anywhere. They got just their little, little tiny side cutters is all they are. And the trick here is to clip the old cap out without interfering with the new cap. that right there. There we go. This one's a little tougher to get into. There we go. Now let's inspect our joints again. That looks good. That one's okay. right there oh I clipped the new one <laughs> damn it I clipped the new one all right back to work see mistakes happen mistakes happen twist this one off if I can twist it off here. Okay. Okay, that solder joint isn't very good. That one's got to be resoldered. That one's okay. These are okay. Let's resolder this one. Clean our tip again. There we go. Do a close inspection. Clip off any leads that are sticking out. Just to make it clean. Now I normally, I, I have glued the caps back down to the board and I, I have found that it really hasn't made a difference. So I tend to leave them. They're, they're stiff. They're not going to, they're not going to vibrate. They're not touching anything. They're fine. And that's it. So now we're going to put it back together and see how it sounds.